I'm starting the recording now. So welcome everyone. Welcome to our monthly chaos meeting. We have, um, I sent out an agenda yesterday. Um, one Google Summer of Code update, upcoming events. We have the Code of Conduct team vote that I asked you all to vote on, please. And then updates from our work groups and committees. And Matt had sent in a request to also discuss how metrics are put on our list. Um, so those are the topics. Does anyone else want to add something to the agenda? I see shaking heads. No one steps forward. So we can start the next topic of Google Summer of Code updates. Who has an update? Um, I can say that we are still in uh, um, progression. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, can hear you. Okay. Fine. Okay, great. So I, um, I was just saying that uh, we are still progressing. Pranjal had some trouble with um, family matters, so he's maybe a bit um, slower than expected. He is trying to recover. This week we switch to um, Thursday for the meeting. And uh, next week uh, we are due a review of the uh, progress for Google, where we should be stating whether he is progressing as expected or not. Um, I think that's all for now. So from the technical point of view, uh, we are uh, starting to implement the, the metrics, the chaos metrics. He already produced um, an Python notebooks with uh, some of them. And now the idea is to start implementing them in, in manuscripts. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Welcome. And um, the, uh, the other update I have is for uh, Keanu, who uh, has been working with us on wrapping Percival and pulling in some mailing list data um, making it available for natural language processing. And he's got a few Jupyter notebooks that he's put together along those lines, uh, combining both Percival and the Augur uh, functionalities. So uh, I'm excited about that. And I think Jesus and I are going to start having a call with him routinely. And I like the model that Jesus has put forth with a regular um, sort of weekly to-do list um, and uh, blog posting. So uh, Keanu and I haven't discussed that yet because uh, I just got back from Sweden, but um, I did mention it to him. So I imagine we'll, we'll talk about that more, but uh, things, are, things are going well, I think. But yeah, we do owe a report to Google as AC points out. Well, um, well, for me, I just um, uploaded some stuff for Jupyter Notebooks with respect to the um, hypermail, as um, Sean was saying. Um, so I'm just working on that. And I think we just need to discuss a bit more about like how exactly um, I have to upload it because there's some stuff we need to go over with respect to like the um, the database with respect to like how the Piper mail will be exactly. But I think, well, hopefully I'm I'm going good so far. Awesome. Any questions on the topic of Google Summer of Code? Going once. Going twice, then we go on to the next topic. Uh, Upcoming events, ChaosCon. So uh, I know that today there was a meeting, or there is, I don't remember the timing. I don't know if it's going to be or if it already was a meeting to discuss right on. This well, do you know, maybe you, you were in it, right? It, it will be right after this meeting. Okay, great. Then maybe you prefer to comment. So we 
have the proposals um, sent in and we all went through, looked at them individually and after this um, monthly call, the Chaos Con organizing committee will get together to talk about the proposals and start building a program. So that's where we are right now. Did I forget anything? Anything else? No. Uh, just to say that we will receive uh, maybe like uh, 10 or 12 proposals, right? Oh, yes. And uh, most, most of them from people active to some extent in the community, but also some from other people not that active, which is good because we can, that they can engage maybe thanks to this. I will credit our participation at ICSI and the SOHIL workshop for that, mm -hmm. whether or not that's true, Jesus. Sure, can you, can you repeat? I said, sure, I said I would credit our participation at the SOHIL workshop or at okay. uh, ICSI. Whether or not that's true, I think we should claim victory for at least promoting something somewhere else. No. Although I am, I am curious to know when, when we, I'm curious about where they came from, but that can wait for the next meeting. So I don't know. So uh, one, one thing is coming to the meetings and another one is contributing. Maybe coming to the meetings is more time demanding. And I don't expect a lot of people came into the meetings, either to these meetings or to Chaos Gun and stuff like that. But I really expect some more people to get involved somehow, maybe in defining metrics or maybe in the software or something. That's my that's my gut feeling. I don't know. So yeah, we definitely have some uh, good engagement potential here. Hmm. So I look forward to it. Anything else? Any questions on ChaosCon? Any comments on ChaosCon? Not from my side. Any other upcoming events that anyone wants to talk about or give an update on? Uh, Sam, maybe we can summarize a bit on the Esso Hill event? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I think I think that's um, a good idea. Do you want to try that, Jesus? <laughs> Do you want me? I'm... Well, <laughs> you were the presenter, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think I think the, the main, there were two really, I think, high profile, uh, actually three kind of high profile pieces of chaos there. One was just that Jesus and Kate Stewart and I were, were, were engaged in the workshop of about, I think it was about 15 to 16 people, maybe 20. Um, and Kate gave the keynote that opened it up and really talked about the different dimensions of open source and her experience uh, with the Zephyr project and you know trying to nurture open source communities and the need for metrics and understanding of their health. and. Grimoire Lab and Baturgia came up, I would say, through many of the different talks and conversations as, as a chaos project that, that people use to understand some of the some of the basic metrics. And then we used uh, an hour that they set aside for our project that I facilitated where I just basically presented a so heel tuned version of the standard chaos slides and facilitated a discussion about where people get their data, how they share data, uh, how they calculate their metrics. And I think I think kind of the, the most interesting outcome of that for me was that people don't, researchers are not using, they're using their own things to calculate these metrics and report them in academic papers, although they are using a common set of data sources and a rich, and it's a much longer set of data sources than I imagined it to be, which we, I shared with the group in a Google Doc, but should probably share somehow in the context of chaos. Hmm. That'd be my summary. Did I miss anything, Jesus? No, I don't think so. Yeah, just to um, just to highlight, this was the first uh, uh, Sohil uh, conference and uh, well workshop, and uh, I think that the people were happy with uh, chaos being presented there, and it was mentioned uh, in many of the talks. So I think that um, basically we had a very good uh, presentation there and Sen did a very good summary of uh, what chaos is and so on. So Sohil was in Sweden?
right? Yeah, it was co-located with ICSI, which is the major software engineering conference. And the idea is that around ICSI there are small workshops, and this one was one of those, specifically on software health and that kind of stuff. So these were all researchers at the conference or the workshop? I would say that mostly researchers. There are to excess some people of the industry were coming, but I don't think they were coming to Shock Hill. I mean, I, I didn't know everybody in the room, but I would say that at least most of them were researchers. Yeah. Okay. Were they mostly Europeans then, or across the world? Mm, I don't remember exactly. It was uh, uh, definitely across the world, but I think that uh, in Shock Hill in particular, it was mostly Europeans and maybe some Canadian too. Uh, Sin, do you, do you remember? I remember I th at least one Canadian. I mean, Kate's Canadian, technically. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there were, uh, it was a lot of Europeans. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe at least half European. I think slightly, slightly more than that. And, you know, because Tom Menz brought at least two students. I think he may have had actually a third student there. No. And then, uh, Jesus, your your group had a number of presentations as well, at least two, maybe yeah. three. Yeah, I do um, assume. Yeah, so there was, um, yeah, okay. I'm sure, yeah. So if if, uh, if it is true that researchers currently use their own tools, but they share the same data sources, is there a way for chaos to? to provide to researchers a better service or what what connection points might we see here? So from the point of view of tools, we were doing some marketing of um, um, Grimoire Lab and uh, Augur and our tools, both in Sohil and in MSR, Mining Software Repositories Conference, which was the day after. And uh, my impression is that some researchers are interested in using third party tools because they really do some other stuff and they want to bother with retrieving all the data and all that stuff. Uh, but that's still not that common. I mean, it's just a few people doing that. But my, my impression is that the trend is going to grow as people from other communities can. For instance, if you're interested in machine learning, you are just interested in getting a database with a lot of data. And you really don't mind how to gather the data. If somebody can gather the data for you, that's much better. If there is a tool gathering for you, that's much better. So my impression is that uh, the use of uh, tools by third parties is going to increase during the next years. Uh, we have had some feedback after MSR from people, I mean, researchers came in and use the tools. I know because of the issues they are opening in, in GitHub enough because that something is not working or, or something like that. But it's difficult to know whether um, many of them are, are going to use the tools in a continuous way. So if they implement their own tools, how much have they aligned with chaos metrics or were there any, was there any feedback about chaos metrics from these researchers? I don't I, think, well, Tim, go ahead. Uh, Ian, my, my sense from my sense from the MSR experience as well as the workshop it is is that it, our suspicions that there are not in there are some cases as in the case of commits and reducing white space, white space and things like that where really explicit agreement exists about what the metrics are. I think that a lot of what these folks are doing is trying to implement new metrics or identify new ways to measure software repository success, especially or health and maturity. And I mean, I think the role that chaos can play is to potentially help them, and I don't know what way this is, but to help them increase the uh, uptake of some of the things that they do. Um, the keynote for the Mining Software Repositories conference was actually, I thought, very critical of the, the practical application of the work in that community, which I think I I took that as possibly an opportunity for chaos, but I tend to be optimistic about such things. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. That was that was awesome. Are there any other um, comments on Sohil? Question? 
how about other conferences that are coming up, other events? If there is none, well, uh, just to mention that OSCON is in July, um, together with uh, Nicole and Anita and some other people from the Diversity and Inclusion Working Group, we got accepted a breakout session in the Community Literacy Summit. It's taking place on the 17th, well, the weekend of the 17th of July. Uh, the agenda is still to be public. So we are having there. Uh, uh, I think basically, um, well, we, uh, in, in terms of the company, Viteria, we are having a booth in OSCON, so um, we are, of course, uh, all listening and telling the people about chaos and so on, but in terms of chaos or pure chaos, uh, this Community Leadership Summit uh, uh, weekend, we are going to have a slot there. Uh, on another issue, I forgot to mention that tomorrow and the day after tomorrow uh, in Madrid, there is um, um, the national meeting on all of open source companies, which is Open Expo. And uh, we are also presenting Grimoire Lab and Percival mm -hmm. in uh, some of the sessions. But it's, it's mostly national for Spain. Now, if you want to take notice, Open Expo is the name, which is mainly for free open source software companies. It is basically a national event. Think of our small OSCAN in Madrid. Okay, cool. That's wonderful. Hmm. Thank you. All right, then I'll move on to the next topic. We have a call out for the code of conduct team, uh, a call out for votes. So please do vote. The candidates are uh, Nicole. Hi, you're here. And uh, hello. Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I just said hello to the team. Realize it. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sharing the link in the um, comments, and if you have not voted yet, please do. We need uh, three candidates to be elected, since we have exactly three candidates in the. Uh, on the poll, I already suspect what the outcome will be. Um, but you can write in new names if you want to nominate someone new. Um, they just will not have the benefit of everyone who already has voted to get a chance to vote on them. So, Are there any questions on the Code of Conduct team election? And the, so just to clarify this, the Code of Conduct team will be responsible for monitoring the incidents report mailing list and responding accordingly. So enforcing the Code of Conduct. That's the, and it's uh, elected for two years and then, or whenever someone wants to stop and then we elect someone new to join the team. So if you have not voted yet, I did send the link, please do so now. And then we can move on to the updates from the um, work groups or committees, whatever you want to do first. So saying maybe we can comment on the, the MD working group? Yeah, um, do you want to lead? I mean, I think we had a good conversation sort of talking about a worker, a working strategy in um, when we were there in Sweden. All right, go for it. Um, oh, well, I guess I guess that yeah, I, I forget. Um, we had a little miscommunication about the last uh, working group meeting, but there's a, 
a couple of to do's that came out of that. Um, one is that we're, we are working on certain metrics right now and a uh, Jesus and the intern that Google summer code person have been building out the chaos metrics, um, as have, uh, folks on the auger team. And we agree on this strategy that we're going to use the, the Jupyter hub notebooks to, to push out the, um, the actual first cut at, at understanding metrics. And I think, so that's the part that Jesus and I have discussed. The part um, from the last meeting that I owe a summary on um, to everyone, including uh, Jesus, is that we're gonna, I'm gonna put together like a draft of a workflow that we can follow. So there was some discussion during the meeting of the need to have ways of clearly going back and forth between folks who are defining metrics and then the implementation of the metric so that we can see the definitions as they evolve and get updates um, back and forth and also give people a chance to play with implementations of the metrics to understand what they really are. I mean, I think in the case of things like commits, we have a good understanding. I think as we get into the space of diversity and inclusion, there'll be more discussion around concrete implementations. Um, and that's, that's a high level summary. I was looking for my notes here, but don't have them right at the ready. But maybe if we go on to the next topic, I'll find them. So it sounds like you're just working through the, through the metrics right now, implementing them and providing the notebooks where people can yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's, you know, making sure that we get to a, a workflow and a process that that makes it reasonably clear, um, you know, what our release process is going to be for the metrics, um, trying to get our message clear on, on GitHub, point people to reference implementations, um, maybe give people, I think, building a getting started guide in a cover page where the, I think that I'm looking, I found my notes are the two main things that, that came out of the discussion. And so I took away it to do to have those drafted. So hopefully that happens today or tomorrow. And then I remember also uh, on the last uh, growth measure in the client group work group call, you had mentioned something about engaging more with uh, people who actually use metrics and get yeah. more direct. Yeah, so we, we're going to invite, I think I would say one of the things that Ray, and Ray was sort of the the lone community manager represented, but I think everyone on this call, is, and especially anyone who is a community manager, we I think getting engagement from community managers is like the two of Kernel's you know, the highest likelihood of success is going to happen through just personal invitations. And if we have people that we know are community managers that we can personally invite, that that would be helpful, I think, to increase that engagement. And I don't know if, you know, you have any thoughts. Hey, Susan, I had a miscommunication about which meetings were which weeks when we were together yeah. in Sweden. So um, I'm, I'm sorry because I missed the meeting last week. So. And I was disconnected for a while now. I don't know what happened with my network. I was disconnected for three minutes, so I, I couldn't have your presentation, but I agree with everything. <laughs> <laughs> so just, uh, I, I don't know if you commented about it, but I think that there are two, uh, like two levels. Uh, one is, uh, let's say the technical level, how to compute the metrics and so on, which is the one in which we are working more now. And the other one is how to interpret the metrics. And I think that's where you mentioned the, the convenience of having people more involved in communities and so on, so that we can really produce useful metrics for them. And I think that we still need to work in the, in the two levels. I agree. Awesome. Thank you for the update from the Growth Mutual Client Work Group. Any questions, comments? 
then how about we move on to the um, diversity and inclusion work group? Yeah, uh, well, Georg or Nicole, uh, or the three, any of the three of us can basically talk here. So maybe Nicole. <laughs> Danielle, thank you. Um, so a couple Tragi of tragically, your your voice just cuts out when you start to talk, but then after you've talked for a while, your whatever is happening seems to clear itself up. So I hear the same issue. Oh yikes! Okay, then you Oh okay, <clears throat> okay. I just was gonna uh, mention a couple of different things. One, the work is continuing on the metric category. We are due to present a call tomorrow morning uh, community. Uh, so an inclusion work group. Um, and then there's uh, some great um, experience events, and I think that we already mentioned uh, that it's at uh, let's see, Summit. Oh, Nicole, excuse okay. me, I don't know if it's still happening to you, but it's happening to me. So it's my con okay. Yeah, I have the same issue. Sorry, right. Nicole. Oh, okay, no problem. Uh, Danielle, why don't, why don't you go, because I'll hand it off to you. Oh, perfect. Maybe, maybe Nicole. In the in the meantime, you can add some topics to the chat. Or... We're on the IRC channel, uh, keeping track of the meeting and keeping minutes for everyone who cannot make it today. Yeah, and on well, the the chat here in the in the Zoom. Or the Zoom chat. Oh, yeah, so we we can make great things. Um, well, maybe I'm missing something, but. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Nicole and, and Georg, please uh, uh, build on, on top of me. But basically, in terms of the metrics, as uh, Nicole mentioned, we keep evolving. So we successfully got an agreement about the goals that we wanted to measure, um, the questions and metrics. And um, thank you very much, Georg, for your work putting all together in a uh, markdown format. So we are right now discussing in uh, that specific pull request. Uh, indeed, there are two, two, three open questions in that pull request that we would perhaps to discuss with all of you here. But it's basically, uh, well, the first one, some diversity and inclusion metric, well, some diversity metrics were already defined in the metrics committee. So basically how to merge everything. Um, as far as I remember, uh, or at least I have in my mind the idea of basically overwriting everything and having just the diversity and inclusion metrics, but maybe I'm wrong here. So this is still ongoing discussion. Um, and the other open question is that if we all agree, well, basically Georg, Alexander, Anita, Emma, and others about the things that were um, detailed by Georg in, in the pull request, so basically we can merge this and we can keep iterating. So regarding to the metrics committee, I don't know if you have any specific question or you would like to proceed in some specific way, Georg or Sean, what do you think? So this actually feeds into the discussion that Matt had wanted us to bring up today, where hmm. and I'll read what he, um, what he wrote in his email. So Matt wrote, while I won't make it to tomorrow's meeting, I would really like to start a discussion of how we go about deciding which metrics are part of a category. For example, growth, merger, and decline, risk, diversity, inclusion, or value. Maybe we decide that it's the judgment of the working groups or that an approved pull request to the category is sufficient. To date, it has been very informal and maybe this is the preferred approach. However, it could be nice to have some agreement on this. So I think that's exactly your question, Daniel. How do we decide what metrics are the ones that should go in the um, categories 
do the workrooms mm. take precedent? Do the existing metrics take precedent? So any any opinions on that? Please, I open it up. Discussion is happening now. So if no one has anything, I can share my opinion. I I was I'm under the impression that we started the work groups as the stewards of each category. And with that, I think the work groups are the ones who decide what metrics go into a category or not into a category. And when they make changes and post it to the metrics uh, repository, that is a way to open up the conversation with the larger audience. So the way I see it is the work group agrees on something um, of adding a metric, defining a metric, removing a metric, and then pushes that decision out to the metrics for feedback for, um, for other people to look at it and discuss. And in the end effect, I think it's still the work group that should make the decision. But the work, the metrics committee is where we open it up to include everyone and get broader feedback. So that's how I see it. Well, maybe we need to formalize a bit um, when the working groups are actually proposing metrics, because right now we have discussions in the work in the uh, working groups, and supposedly at some point we do like a freeze a release and upload that information to the metric repository. Maybe that should be the moment where everybody involved in the metrics committee should be commenting on what the working group is producing. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, I don't see a problem if similar metrics are used by different working groups with different aims. So we really don't need to, let's say, standardize saying a certain metric needs to belong to a certain category or to a certain working group or something like that. So each of the working groups should be producing a comprehensive view of what the goals. And uh, then we may try or not to put similar metrics into context in the metrics committee when they upload the stable releases, let's say, of what they are doing so that we can avoid discussing once and again the same stuff. What do you think? I, th I think the, so if the metrics committees are functioning in a, in a way where they're building examples as they go along. So if, if diversity and inclusion is building example metrics, then, then that discussion is going to happen by default, right? Inside the working group. I think it's, and that's one of the reasons the working group exists uh, instead of the metric definition separated from the technical work of implementing it, right? So, I think what you're saying should work. I think that sounds workable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with all of the comments basically, so nothing else to add here. I would say that basically the working group is the one defining the metrics and then uh, we'll upload, we'll move everything to upstream. That should be the metrics committee somehow. Work there, right, right there. Because I foresee, for instance, so we were discussing about diversity and inclusion, but this comes from a broader discussion that it's what does it mean diversity? And for some people in the metrics committee and while well, having discussion, the diversity means in some cases diversity of organizations. So it's organizational diversity, which is nothing related to diversity and inclusion at all. But we may have the same term that is diversity in this case. But, and Nicole says she agrees. <laughs> so in the case where we have different understandings of diversity, um, is it then the work group's responsibility to capture those different uh, definitions and provide um, understanding for saying someone interested in diversity of organizations, look at these metrics, someone in about diversity inclusion, 
in a different sense these other metrics or well i i would say that the the, the working group about diversity and inclusion shouldn't focus on diversity on organizational diversity for instance but perhaps in the future there will be some other diversity working group where people tend to work on other definitions for diversity i mean and there are people indeed that were interested in that so, but is that part of the diversity and inclusion working group well i don't think so um and i wanted to, to to mention on, on top of this that Nicole was adding some comments in the chat. So basically, uh, she mentioned that we are continuing working on, on the metrics categories, that this is our, our discussion that we have right now. Um, uh, Nicole, and I think, uh, Georg, you are going to uh, present tomorrow this work to a mass community, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it would be great to have feedback. Um, and uh, Nicole mentioned as well that we are having great presence ac across several upcoming events. So basically the Community Leadership Summit in July, the Open Source Summit in uh, Vancouver in Osco, in, in, Osco, uh, in, in Open Source Summit, um, of course, uh, ChaosCon. Um, I would say that nothing else. Oh, and Nicole says, Oh yeah, and uh, of course we are. We have a delay in the working in the meeting for the diversity and inclusion working group. It's taking place this Thursday, and then again uh, in a couple of weeks on Wednesday, on the twentieth. Perfect. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions on the diversity and inclusion work group, or any other comments and questions on the workflow of how we establish metrics? Mm, no, just just to mention that if anyone is interested in uh, having a clear view of what, what we are doing right now, please have a look at the notes and in to the pull request. So any feedback is more than welcome. So we are starting to build all of this. Yeah, and then I think we were uh, we had several requests to just merge the pull request and then start new pull request for detailed feedback. That's okay for me. So if that's okay for basically Nicole that she's around. If it's the three of us, it works for me. Yeah, Emma had made that comment and had the original idea. So I'm okay with that, Nicole. Okay, Nicole says it works for her. Okay, so, okay, so I will merge this right now. Awesome, thank you very much. And then thank you. any feedback directly via pull requests or issues. All right. Uh, there's not much update for the metrics committee. We have outsourced most of the work to the work group, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't have an update. Anyone can think of something? How about the software committee? So I think, um, as far as I know, nothing special. Uh, Saying can see better, can can say better, but I think that Agur is in uh, getting uh, some more functionality. From the Gumarla point of view, you know that during the last uh, two months, two new tools came into the toolset. Th sorry, three new tools: one for dealing with ident identities, another one for. Uh, dealing with projects, and the latest one, uh, a library for easing how enriching indexes are produced. And the rest is uh, business as usual, I mean, fixing bugs and improving functionality and that kind of stuff. Remember that Grimoire Lab has weekly um, uh, releases, and uh, we are producing like every two or three weeks uh, official Python packages and okay containers. And for uh, Agur, maybe, and you can comment something else. Yeah, I don't have. Um, we're uh, building a release of Augur right now that's um, got a lot of additional repo based functionalities in it so that uh, people can configure a set of repositories and produce a whole bunch of new metrics 
And we have built out all of the metrics in growth, maturity, and decline that are defined clearly. There's some things like I put a couple issues in around like what a sub project is and how we want to define that. But the things that we had a clear understanding of, we've implemented at this point. Well, good to hear that things are moving forward. Any questions to the software committee? Any other comments? So looking through the list, looking through the agenda, we have hit every topic. Are there any other um, topics? Anything on anyone's mind? Anything else we should look at? Now is the chance. Well, if there's nothing else anyone wants to bring up, then thank you very much for this very productive meeting. I am going to close the meeting and stop the recording. Thank you.